All right, don't adjust your dials. Trace Trelko once again missing in action, but do not worry. Brian W. Peterson has come out of the cave. He's been in an office for, I don't know, like six straight months. He's come out of the cave. He's lit up his lightsabers behind him, and he is more than willing to join in tonight on the Suns Live Show. Brian, first off, brother, appreciate you, man. How are things? Oh, things are good. Uh, nice and busy in the office. Tax season is in full swing. So, uh, you know, if I have to take a call with a client, you'll understand, I'm sure. Um, uh, but, uh, no, we're good. I'm, I'm glad to be back. Haven't seen you guys in a little while. So, uh, I've been, uh, I've been MIA, but I'm glad to be here. All right. Well, you can take a call only if you, uh, you put it on air. Cause I want to understand other people's taxes, but we'll get to taxes. We'll get to football. We'll get to basketball. We'll get to a whole bunch of stuff uh, throughout the show. We got your questions inside the box, all that good jazz. So we will, uh, we'll get all that rocking and rolling. Brian, let's start with football first, before we get into basketball, obviously spring practice took, uh, took place again this week, a week off for spring break. Uh, the Knights are back on their practice field. I know you, you're you pouring over 20-second clips like the rest of us sickos. What have you seen so far, Brian, in the 17 seconds total of UCF football practice that you've been the, able to digest? Those quick practice clips that we get, I live for those, right? That's the yeah. best thing about the offseason is who's throwing the ball, you know, how quick is it coming out, who's he throwing it to, um, and we judge our entire season based on what these these 10 second clips look like. And uh, hats off to Trace for getting out there and getting those clips for us. Right. Uh, the, the hardest working man out there. Well, um, not today. I mean, because today well, is MIA. Right? I Andrew Cherico is your guy today. Well, yeah, Andrew, Andrew gets around. Uh, I guess Trace is using his very generous PTO. Very generous. Uh, that, you, that you're such a, a generous you. employer, Adam. Uh, but yeah, those, so those, uh, keep them coming, right? We want to see all of those 10 second clips just so we can see exactly what we want to see out of those clips. Uh, but you know, if, if, if you believe everything you see on those clips, we're going all the way, let's go to the national championship, baby. You know, does this feel a little anticlimactic? There's not a lot of drama this off season, Brian, every year we're talking quarterbacks we're talking position battles, you know, who the new guy, there, there's not a lot of drama. Does this almost feel like anticlimactic that there's not a no, more storylines here? You know, I was thinking about that earlier today, um, and we probably forget we really didn't have a lot of quarterback drama last season just because we all expected that JRP was going to be the incumbent starter when Mikey left and entered the transfer portal. But the several years that we had prior to that, after McKenzie got hurt, uh, and then when Matt got hurt and broke his ankle, like there were several years where we didn't know who was going to be the starter, and that was all we could talk about all offseason. Whereas now it's like, hey, what do you know? Obviously, KJ Jefferson is the guy. He's going to play. I mean, I guess we could talk about the drama for who's going to take that quarterback two slot. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been pretty low key, which is kind of refreshing, if I'm being honest. Yeah, we're going to have to manufacture some drama. But don't you worry. That's what the Suns do best <laughs> is we will manufacture some drama. One thing I like, Brian, is that Gus and the staff have done a concerted job of getting new people in front of us, new faces, new voices. We've had a few new people at the podium, uh, including today, uh, Andrew Cherko is out there and uh, and met up with a couple of new people. Brian, let me introduce you to Ethan Barr and what he had to say about his new role with UCF. Yeah, I think linebacker is where I'll be. That's where I played uh, my whole time in college and, and high school as well. So... Um, yeah, middle linebacker is where I'll be. I see my role being the leader of the defense, the guy that communicates to the rest of the guys, help, help get people lined up, just communicating about you know what we can do better uh, while we're off the field, and then just yeah, like I said, getting everyone else lined up. So um, I think that's kind of what I was brought in for too. So. Obviously, Brian Ethan is a, a linebacker. That's probably the position of most concern for a lot of people. Is that the position you're most interested in kind of seeing developed throughout the rest of camp and before the spring game? Yeah, I mean, we're not going to know until we get into the first couple games of the season to see what we really have with that linebacker core. We know the coaches that uh, have said that that is an area of need. So uh, we've been hitting the transfer portal pretty hard. We've got some freshmen coming in that I think they're going to fill in those roles pretty nicely. Um, that is really the big question on the defense still, I think. You know, it's a question last year. And if we can shore up that area on the defense and get those DBs uh, playing well, I think I think the defense would be in a good position. Well, you mentioned DBs. One of the returners uh, on the defensive back is Brandon Adams. He also met the media today, Brian, and he has a he has an observation and then a question for you. Well, I can see now, like that everybody got that dog. Like I said last, like everybody got that dog. And that, yeah, it's been fun to watch. 
Brian, do you have that dog in you? Brian, uh, Brian, I don't know about you. Brandon Adams has that dog in him. He sees people with dog in him. Brian W. Peterson, do you have that dog in you? I certainly do not have the same dog that Brandon Adams has in himself. Okay. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe maybe when it comes to taxes, but, but not, <laughs> not on the defensive Listen, side. Listen, this, this of time of year, Brian, that's a good dog to have as somebody who can also balance your, uh, your 1099. So, uh, <laughs> look, we'll have more football talk coming up here while Paul Lounsbury a uh, friend of the program will be almost here in a little bit and uh, we'll dive into more football, Brian, but let's transition over to basketball. So breaking news on Tuesday evening, uh, a lot of national media reports and then the Orlando Sentinel and a few other folks have sort of chimed in that Johnny Dawkins will be receiving a contract extension. I haven't seen a whole lot of details floated out there. Mike Bianchi in a, in a, opinion column he had today seemed to reference it being a two-year extension i don't know if that's a fact i don't know that's if that's what i read as well yeah i don't know I if think that's I, his, I think we read the same same column yeah i don't know if that's a fact if that's just his uh his inclination there uh but obviously brian this is a, a really polarizing topic you're either pro johnny or you're anti johnny there's really no in between it looks like according to this at least tari mahajer is uh, is becoming pro johnny what are your thoughts on on an extension for johnny dawkins do you think that's deserved do you think that's earned Listen, it's it's not uh, it's not the UCF fan base. It's not UCF Twitter. If we're not heavily heavily divided on one topic, uh, and that topic happens to be Johnny Dawkins right now, um, I had said uh, in some discussions that I had with some other fans a couple weeks ago uh, that I would like to see Johnny get an extension for probably two years. That was kind of the key that I had in my mind for the length of time I would like to see him extended, get him a little bit of uh, security that he'll be here for a couple more years. Um, he's obviously over exceeded expectations for the first season in the big 12. Uh, nobody expected us to play as well in the big 12 as we did. Um, uh, it, it really hurts to lose to USF in, in the first round of the NIT, but that game aside, he over exceeded expectations in the first year of the big 12. Uh, so I think he deserves another chance to run it back, give him that, you know, two, three year extension, keep him on board. But I do want to see some progress next season. He's got a handful of talented transfers that are coming in. We don't know what the team is going to look like, uh, but I was happy to see that that extension is coming in. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, I'm a businessman, Adam. I don't want to make a poor business decision, but I think giving him a two-year, three-year extension, buy him some time, let's see some additional growth and progress next season, and I think we'll be in good shape. Well, to your point, the numbers are important, right? A two-year extension, he has one year remaining. So is that two years plus the one? So is that essentially three more years for Johnny Dawkins? We don't know what the buyout is on right. either side, right? So we don't know what, what the buyout is for him to leave or for us if we need to, to move on from him. Uh, and so I think some of those details are important. But I do think at some point you have to plant your flag as a school and say, okay, we're, this is our coach. We're behind our coach um, because you're going to need that recruiting, right? No one wants to be that lame duck, right? No one wants that lame duck here to, to understand what's happening. So I think Terry Mahadra had to make a decision now it's curious we haven't seen anything official or formal come out yet you see if it's been a lot more um you know of a stickler these days with releasing contracts i know uh, gus's contract still isn't out there so there's there's some people probably sharpening their freedom of information act pencil right now trying to figure out how to get their their hands on that contract and figure out what that looks like but you mentioned changes uh brian the portal is already busy cj walker the biggest name who uh, announced he's in the portal uh, Marcellus Avery announced he's going pro, but not hiring an agent. Um, I don't know if that means he's coming back to UCF or not. DeMar Langford um, announced that, that he will also be leaving. Um, uh, Mintotis Moskis also announced that, that he'll be, he'll be taking off as well. So uh, the transfer portal already getting busy for UCF. So it'll be an interesting time to see how, uh, how Johnny progresses. Brian, do, do you have a sense of, do you think this is, is going in the right trajectory, right? So, you know, there's a lot of excitement about Mikey Williams potentially signing with UCF. Um, there's some top recruits coming in here. Are you are you thinking this is a, a ship that's pointing upward for UCF basketball at this point? I think so. And that was part of the reason that I was, you know, pro him getting a short, you know, two year extension. Um, I wanted to see these recruits that Johnny has been, you know, touting as coming in. Um, we've seen a lot of Mikey Williams, who's potentially going to be, I mean, he, all, all indications are that he is still coming. So I think those type of big name transfers can really, uh, really change this program next year. And I wonder how many of these uh, transfers that are leaving the program are maybe perhaps seeing the writing on the wall that maybe their playing time will be less because of the transfers that we have coming in. Uh, but I'm excited to see what the, what the squad looks like next season once we get this uh this team finally 
uh, put together and, and we see what we've got to play with. But and that was, again, and, and that, that was a big part of keeping Johnny on board, I think, from Terry yeah. Mahajer's perspective, yeah. Yeah, I think you want to try to build on that consistency. So obviously, uh, with college sports these days, things change by the day with transfer portal. So we'll certainly keep our eyes peeled if and when we get official word about what uh, what Johnny Dawkins and his contract extension looks like, Brian. But every week on the show, we have people on here, and it's not really hard to be cooler than us, right? It's really not. Like pretty much everyone we have on the show is cooler than we are, especially this guy, because we all have this fantasy of like what we're gonna do with our lives, and I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna do something right, uh, and and this guy literally put his money where mouth is his name is rob starkman he is a uh, he's a ucf alum and he's the founder of rock'em socks he's also now the proud owner of a ucf basketball court that is uh, now adorned inside of his uh, his facility so first off rob appreciate you for hopping in thanks for joining us here on the sons of uh, sons of UCF. thanks for having me i appreciate it guys all right so let's just start here how did this come about like we all have this <laughs> thing like hey i'd love a sign hey i'd love a shoelace how did you sit down one day and go you know what i'd love is the ucf basketball court so I've been going to the Final Four since I was young. My family has always been in college basketball. My dad coached college basketball for like 20 plus years. And so every single year you go to the Final Four, there's a coaches convention. And the one like gift that you have to get, they give it away every year is, I think it's called Connor Sports. They give away a little piece of a basketball court with the actual Final Four's uh, like court graphic on it. And so like I've had these little basketball courts my whole life. And when we recently moved into a new facility, we're like, oh, we have enough space to make a basketball court. So that was always in our plans to put a basketball court in there. And so last year at the Final Four, I walk up to the Connor Sports booth, get my little my, my little piece. And I, I talk to the guy and I'm like, hey, like, you know, I own this company. We want to put a basketball court in there. How much would it be? And they start like going out numbers. And he's like, where are you guys located at? And I was like, in Orlando. And he goes, Orlando. He's like, Orlando. He's like, we just we were just out at UCF the other day putting a new court in there. I was like, a new court? They're like, yeah, because the Big 12, they're they're moving to a new, you know, a new conference, so they're getting a new court. I was like, I went to UCF. I was like, I didn't know the basketball court was up for grabs. I was like, what do you guys do with it? They're like, oh, well, usually basketball courts they sell back to us. We, you know, shave it down, we reskin it, and we sell it out again. So like it, it's just like the cyclical uh, system that they have. And so I like hit up our team. I was like, all right, basketball court is up for grabs. Like we can get in right now. And so we have a pretty good relationship with uh, Terry Mahajer over at uh, UCF Athletics. And uh, my partner, Steve Rollins, he just was DMing him over Twitter. And he's like, hey, like, heard there's a new court coming. What can we do? <laughs> so this was about like a year in the making. And uh, we finally uh, finished the acquisition. It was like in November, December of last year. And right in the thick of like our holiday season, we were hauling out the the old court into our into our facility and we finally put it up this year and it's just been it's been like a dream come true it's amazing so yeah it's uh it's really cool to to know that like man that's that's where my office was for like four years of my college career that's where the business started like without this court right here i wouldn't even have this business so to like bring it home it's i i, I like make it uh it's similar to like if you bought the the room that you're you were actually born in at the hospital and you have it in, on display in your house you know so it's pretty damn cool yeah, that'd be interesting. But did you did you have a um, obviously a lot of iconic courts from UCF, right? There was the old black top, yeah. Brian's favorite, uh, which is the roller coaster version. Were you trying to get your hands on a unique <laughs> court, or did you not care which court it was? Just give you any court. So I would have loved to have the roller coaster one. I would love to have yes. that, like the black and gray one, like some really really cool ones because that's unique. It's different, but. Uh, I think it was just, you know, luck of the timing that we got this one. Like uh, they were moving into the Big 12, so they got it in court. Like had we known prior, had we known that they were, you know, selling off of a roller coaster court, like I don't even think they sold it. I think they just gave it back to the company to reskin it. But yeah, I would have loved to have some of the iconic ones over the years. But I think we have a new goal and it's to, uh, you know, continue to grow our company where we can move into a bigger facility and maybe have a few different courts. So we'll see what the Magic do with their old court. Maybe we're trying to get in with that. But uh, yeah, we, we uh, we're very grateful to have the one that we have now, which is really fun. So, Rob, Adam had the picture up there. It looks like it's only half the court. Are you guys? Are there plans to put down the full court? I mean, you got you got the whole warehouse set up there. What's going on? Are you guys going to put the full court out? We're kind of cutting off the UCF logo there. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, uh, I guess, unfortunately, but fortunately, have grown so much over the past, even the past year, since our plans have changed to where we had to amend the court. So we only have a half court right now. 
Um, the rest of the court, it, it, you know, would go where like our inventory and our product is so being made. So we can't really do that right now, but we kept the court intact. Like we only cut pieces from like the opposite ends and like the, um, out of bounds. So we can still put those together. But the idea is definitely like a hundred percent in my mind, it, there's no shot. It doesn't happen. It will, will eventually have a big enough place that we're going to have the actual full court at our facility, which is amazing. What did the uh, what's the delivery of a basketball court look like? Does an eighteen wheeler pull up and you've got you know pallets of a court that they're laying down? How does that work? Yeah, I, it's pretty much that. Uh, we had rented an eighteen wheeler, so like a moving company come in. They go to the UCF arena, and then the, their team you know graciously broke it down for us. And it's like a puzzle that they put together. You nail it down. Like you have to shove the piece in. You have to like pivot it in. So every one of those pieces is coming out. And then it's, uh, it, it's, it's like set up by rows and columns so that you know exactly where each piece is going. Every piece is labeled on the bottom. And then it's just a lot of brute force, a lot of strength that you have to pick. Like those things are heavy. Those pieces of floors are heavy. I think it's like about two inches thick of wood, like probably what, four feet by eight feet. And uh, so we had a bunch of our guys put it together. Like our team literally ended up putting it together. We were supposed to work with the UCF arena, but we couldn't get them in time. And uh, like our team put it together. So it was, it was pretty amazing to see what they were doing, like cutting around the poles and cutting the edges and everything. It, it, I was going to uh, ask about the together. poles. Is, is that, did you guys have to cut the court around the pole like that? You've got yeah, yeah, yeah. So like beams? it's like a, you know, like let's say six inch by six inch square that we had to cut in all those poles. And uh, it's it sits flush. And like, should we, you know, ever go into another place where maybe there aren't poles or they're a different placement? Like that's just, that piece is going to go right back into it. So we definitely kept the entire court intact. And even if you cut it, you can put it back together. So yeah, like I said, I, I, I'm very optimistic that we'll eventually have the the full thing, which is fun. But for right now, hey, half court, like I'll take it. You know, we can shoot half court shots. We can play three on three on that. Like it's damn cool when you come and see it. Are you guys going to put some some safety measures on this <laughs> if you're playing three on three on the, on the oh, bars yes. that are in the middle of the court. <laughs> Definitely. So we have custom uh, like padding that we're going to be putting on the poles. We have custom padding that we're going to be putting on the walls. Uh, that definitely is, is more safe, but I think the, uh, the three on three is we, you, you got to slow down if the ball is about to go out of bounds. You can't run right into the, uh, into <laughs> that, the fences, that'd be that's me. for sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely hit one of those. Yeah, I was going to ask, how do you envision using the court? Is this like pre-work, post-work pickup games? Is this, hey, I just need a little bit of a lunch break? Like, how do you envision using the, the court kind of in the day-to-day -day business? Definitely uh, anybody that can dunk on me gets a complete control of the business. I'm six foot ten, so it's not going to happen. Um, but we've been, you know, we'll play uh, three-point games at the end of, of, of work. We'll play knockout with our entire staff. We've had like some three-on-three -three games that we played. And then we're also working with like a lot of trainers. You know, we got a lot of friends in the industry that uh, can bring some professional athletes over to like, we had like six NFL guys today come over to our place, like pretty big names too. And they're just shooting around. They were just having a ton of fun. So very, very exciting to see the potential. Like these guys are very excited when they come and they see our place. It brings so much legitimacy to our, you know, our entire uh, facility and, and our business. So we're definitely going to like use it as content. We're definitely going to use it as, uh, like a training platform. So there's a lot of things that we can do with this that helps the halo effect of business, but also just like get really cool people in the building. Well, Rob, tell us about your journey. I know you were a student manager for a while at UCF. When we were at UCF, kind of walk us through the life of, of Rob, the UCF student slash student manager for UCF basketball. Yeah, so I was a student manager from my freshman to what ended up being my amended senior year in college. But uh, it was my junior year that uh, we like had these socks that were just blank black and white socks because when we moved from Adidas to Nike because of the Jordan brothers, uh, we just had socks that didn't match our uniforms. So like we're black and gold, we had black and white socks. So I just took them home, dip dyed them and started making them for the players. And that like literally turned into the business. But basketball was like my, my passion from before I even started working at UCF. And uh, you know, we, it was just like a ton of, dedication, long hours. And like UCF basketball was my life for four years. And, and, you know, so fortunately that I got to work with under both coach Spira and uh, coach Jones, but this opportunity of Rockham came under coach Jones and like, he was always so supportive. Their staff was so supportive. And like, I was able to travel with the team and able to work with the team while still building my business. And then some of my best friends and, you know, mentors and people that are still in my life to this day, uh, I met at UCF basketball. So it's definitely something that like I'll look back on my life and that'll always be a, an extremely pivotal moment, regardless of if it was business or not. 
but uh, it was just right place, right time, being able to really build a platform for a business based on this incredible job opportunity that I had as a student manager. Ross, so <clears throat> sticking with Rock'em Socks here, do you have a favorite pair? I mean, are we talking, <laughs> uh, you know, the space, the space generation that you guys put out, the, the not ones, which one's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? I do love the space game ones because we get some sneak previews beforehand. So we get to work on some really, really fun stuff. Uh, I do love the horns down one is always fun, even though, you know, USF cross cross town rival, uh, we get to play a little, you know, play a little fun with that one. Um, but I, I love working with UCF just in general, because it's such, it's so close to my heart. It's so close to like our staff's heart that we're able to tell a bunch of different stories. We're able to, you know, embed ourselves in the culture with the fans, but also with the players now with NIL. So just to be able to have like these kind of relationships that we're able to build because of socks and now underwear is it, amazing. So I, uh, it's hard to say which is my favorite pair, but I always just say the next one that we make. I noticed you guys had a lot of gold socks on there. I don't know if, uh, if we can get uh, some more gold socks, it'd be fantastic. I love me some, yeah. some, some gold socks. Well, that, that got yeah, too much gold. Do we need to do we need to change it up here? No, 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 no. no. So, never, never too much gold. Never too yeah, Brian, much. Good. Brian's pro gold, Rob. Like he's on this kick where he wants <laughs> okay. the gold uniform back. Like the You've only heard like these shades of gold. You know. Fair. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all about the gold. Has there good. been one okay, design, well, Rob, that you had that you you took to people and they're like, nah, that one, that nah, that one's too much. Is it is what 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 makes it to the cutting room floor that unfortunately doesn't see the light of day? Gosh, uh, well, when it comes to UCF, I don't, I don't recall one that's ever been held back on. If anything, it's like usually like a licensing issue. Actually, I don't think they even let us use the Pegasus logo. That's that's one that might might be on the cutting room floor. But uh, there, God, I mean, we we do it all. Like we have kind of no filter. Like we have. He is risen with Jesus looking really cool on it. You know, we have a Donald Trump one where he's doing the YMCA dance. Like we have that one coming out soon. So like we don't really hold back on what we just like to have fun, you know. So there's there's nothing ever vulgar in there. But like if something fun is happening in the world and like we can reach an audience with it, we're going to do it. So, yeah, I think I think uh, very few has has hit the cutting room floor. But, uh, you know, what you see is kind of like straight from our brains right to right to our website. Mario wants to know if he can get a roller coaster uh, court version of Rock'em Socks. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, we'll bring that up tomorrow and we'll see if we can actually make that happen. Because now, now that we own the court, I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to tell stories about prior courts, uh, you know, through like this kind of uh, piece of content now that we have. Rob, another cool thing is you all have not been shy about doing NIL deals with a lot of athletes, obviously a lot of UCF athletes as well. How cool is it for you as an alum, as someone who started this business, now seeing where college athletics is, where you have the ability to work with some of these student athletes? How cool is it that you have the opportunity to make some cool deals with a lot of the uh, the students around UCF? Hey, man, we try to sponsor the managers there asking for a check. So I wish this was happening <laughs> during my time out there. You know, I could have been making some money, but no, it's amazing to like – to just tap in with every single player, whether they're like a superstar or whether they're, you know, uh, falling asleep on the bench, shout out to Pooh. He falls asleep a lot on the bench, but like, you know, we love, we love working with all the, all the athletes, guys, girls, like across every single sport. Um, it's just really, really fun way to stay connected to the school. And like our goal is, you know, like Nike to Oregon, Maryland to, to Under Armour, um, adidas to university of germany berlin who knows where they started like that's what we wanted to that's what we want to do with uh, ucf you know well rob we appreciate you hopping in as always uh it's such a cool story man yes. it's really awesome to see you kind of giving back but also getting something out of, the, out of that deal as well too so if people want to follow you follow rock'em socks i'll give you some some time for a plug i imagine everybody listening or watching knows what rock'em socks is but if they don't how can they find the website how can they find some of the uh, the cool merch you guys have well as always i appreciate you guys having me thanks for uh shouting us out and you know i think we're uh we're, all we ask is for support from ucf fans if you guys are reaching for socks if you guys are giving socks away for for gifts if you guys are buying socks you know hopefully you guys think of us first so definitely check us out rock'emsocks.com we've got probably the world's largest supply of ucf socks Definitely the most authentic one. So, you know, oh, as always, it's going nights charge on. Thanks, Rob, you, said you're six, appreciate it. You, you said you're 6'10", Rob. How's the jumper looking these days? The jumper still good, still pure? It's pretty wet. <laughs> it's pretty wet. Yeah, I was okay. on Fox 35 yesterday. 
And they were filming a segment with me and they're like, oh, let's start off with like a half court shot. Just try and shoot it. And I'm like, just drained it. Absolutely drained it first try. So I never lost it. You, you know, it's like riding a bike, the, that elbow, the form, always yeah. have it. Rob always has the form. Well, Rob, we appreciate you for, for joining us, man. Really cool story. Thanks a lot for, uh, for hopping in and sharing more about your court. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. Charge on. That's cool. Brian. What's one thing you could buy, Brian? If you had the, uh, you know, once, once this tax thing works out for you, are you buying like the, the Citronaut logo? Or are you buying like every gold jersey UCF has? What do you got? I have every gold jersey UCF has. That's also um, fair. You should probably look into that. Yeah. Uh, it's not something that I want to take home. I want that lazy river done. Oh. Let's get the lazy river. Come on. Okay. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can take the, uh, the lazy river. Home. Maybe we can, let me get Rob back on the line. See if he can float us alone uh, for the lazy <laughs> river. Uh, while we do that though, Jeff Allen's going to float us the big 12 minute. As we march to the sweet 16, the big 12 national title hopes are down to two teams in the East region tonight. The two seed Iowa state battles the three seed Illinois. That will be the late game after sun's live on TBS. Tomorrow night in the South region, the top seed Houston squares off against the four seed Duke. That will be the late game on CBS Friday night. In women's NCAA tournament action, we are also down to two teams left in the Big 12. Tomorrow night at 10 on ESPN in the Portland four region, Texas, as the top seed takes on fourth seed at Gonzaga. On Saturday at 530 on ESPN, fifth seed of Baylor takes on the top seed USC in the Portland three region in Sweet 16 action. With your Big 12 Minute, I'm Jeff Allen. There's Jeff Allen with the Big 12 Minute. Brian, are you keeping up with the Big 12 Pro Day, speaking of Big 12, where today John Rice Plumley put up some really impressive numbers in a 449 unofficial 40-yard dash. He uh, he, he had a uh, what it would have been the best quarterback, um, long jump long and broad jump. Yeah. jump. Um, have you been keeping track of, of the Big 12 Pro Day? And do you think there's any chance JRP gets his name called in the draft? I mean, he's certainly helping his stock, right? He's had a great day. Um, I haven't been watching the Pro Day live. I've been catching all of the uh, the updates that UCF football has been posting about all the players. And, I mean, he's had a great day so far, right? I mean, he did. He had over, was it over a 10-foot long jump. Um, he's looking crisp, throwing the football. Um, it's been a good day. He certainly hasn't hurt his stock in any way. Yeah, he's got a visit, I know, scheduled with the Seattle Seahawks. So maybe, just maybe, uh, John Rice Pumley sneaks into a draft. But you and I don't know much about football, but luckily our next guest does, Brian. So we can pepper him with all the football questions we can find. He's former UCF coach Paul Lounsbury, and he's always gracious enough to join us on the show. Coach, first off, thank you so very much for hopping in again, as always, when we need you. No problem, Adam. I appreciate you asking. And also, Brian, it's good to see you. Coach. All right, uh, Coach, before you came on, we had the founder of Rock'em Socks who bought a UCF basketball court. Is there a piece of memorabilia at UCF that if you could buy, you'd want to you'd wanna own? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I, have, I have some memorabilia that I really like, uh, a couple of jerseys and a couple of helmets and things, but uh, I don't know. Uh, a court is... I don't have any place to put a court, so <laughs> not, not many of us do, Coach. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not alone uh, on on that front. But obviously, you spent a lot of time on a field, not a court. I know today you were out at uh, at, at spring practice. So I guess the first question for you is obviously the, the schedule was a little unique, right? There was a practice, then there was an off week, and then there was a practice week again. And this is, I think, the second practice UCF's had this week. Have you noticed any any sort of uh, downslide or any sort of uh, slow motion uh, with the kind of the week off in between the two practice weeks? Uh, no, uh, on the contrary, I thought the the practice uh, on Tuesday and the, and again today were both very spirited and uh, very good effort practices. I I I, I was um, pleasantly surprised that uh, they came back and and were as aggressive and and. Uh, energetic as they were. Um, it's always tough to break spring practice up with spring break, but uh, I think this team has a has a, um, a lot to prove, and I think they know it, and I think they're mentally in a, in a good place. I think Coach Malzahn and his staff have done a great job of getting them there. Well, Coach, forgive me for noticing, but I've spent some time on UCF's campus, and it looks like we have a really nice indoor practice facility but it also looked like today it rained uh out at ucf and yet the the team was outdoors is there a strategic advantage to having them outdoors in the rain was there a reason why they didn't decide hey maybe let's just go inside to the indoor facility well i think if it had been a thunder 
thunderstorms and lightning we'd have been inside but uh, sometimes it's good to, to be out in that weather and get a little wet ball drill um, you know and practice playing in in uh, adverse conditions a little bit because we're going to face them probably during the season so um, we always uh, we always wanted to stay out in it if we could uh, and lightning is the is the key factor now a lot depends on where you are with your plan and what you're planning to do at practice too. Um, but I, I thought it was good to stay out there today. It got a little windy too, but uh, it was, um, it was a good day. I thought. I bet Oklahoma state wishes they had a little more wet ball practice last season. <laughs> yeah, um, probably so. <laughs> Coach. Uh, so tell me uh, in week two here, what's, what's the biggest improvement that you saw uh, in our, in our second week of practice? Well, I mentioned it after the first week, but it, it's even more obvious now is the linebacker positions. Um, Ethan Barr and Deshaun Pace are the, are two transfers that are running with the first team on defense, and uh, I think that's made a, a big difference. Um, uh, Josiah Pierce and um, – I mean, sorry, Josiah Pierre and Xavier – X3 Alexander are the other two that are running with the second team and they're also both transfers. So I think we've improved tremendously there. I think our defensive line is looking better and better and it's great having uh, both Lee and Ricky back. I think that's huge. Uh, we've gotten some help uh, in a couple other spots at defensive end too. And, um, and I think we've gotten some help in the secondary as well. I know we've got the, uh, uh, Pace, young man, was the leading tackler at Cincinnati last year, and, and one of the safeties is the second leading tackler at Cincinnati last year. So I think, uh, I think we're helping ourselves a lot on defense. Uh, I think the, the aggressiveness on defense has is, is been great. Uh, I think they're playing very well. Um, on Tuesday, they had a third down drill with the, against the offense, and the defense dominated that pretty much. Uh, today, um, the defense again dominated in run play action, but the offense actually did very well in red zone. So it's good to see both sides of the ball having some success. And and uh, but I think the linebackers and the defense in general are um, the biggest improvement that I've seen. You mentioned uh, you mentioned the red zone play. How is uh, how's uh, how's KJ looking? Uh, how's our quarterback room looking? What have you seen out of the uh, potential QB two? options that we've got out there and uh, give us a little bit of insight on KJ and how his game is looking. Well, I think KJ is looking really good. Uh, uh, I think Timmy is looking great. Dylan risk and, and Trujillo, Riley Trujillo, both of them uh, showed really positive things. All four of those guys. I think, I think we're in good shape with four guys that can play. And uh, I don't know who's going to end up being, being second, third and, and fourth, I think KJ is it's he's got a he's got a mess up for him to lose the job. I think, but um, I, I really like what I've seen from our quarterbacks too. Uh, I, I really think uh, Dar Darren is doing a great job. Darren Henshaw is doing a great job coaching those guys too. So uh, I'm excited about uh, where our quarterback play is right now. And if we get great quarterback play, we're going to have a good season. Coach, as a follow up to that. Is there anything specific you'd like to see the offense work on within, you know, the red zone when they're practicing? I feel like a lot of times last season we were we were easily moving the ball, and then once we got to the red zone, we seemed to stall out a bit at times. Is there anything that you'd like to see the team practice more on, and, and what can they do to improve in that area? Well, they were working on things today that I really liked, a, a lot of uh, bootlegs and a lot of uh, flow uh, getting out on the edge with the quarterback, uh, a lot of good stuff, I think. So uh, those guys, they know what they're doing. I, I think they're, I think we're going to be fine there. Um, a lot of it just has to come down to the execution. And uh, so we just got to keep working at it and execute. Coach, we were talking about Big 12 Pro Day as you came on. Obviously, a, a player that had a pretty good Pro Day today uh, was Javon Baker. Obviously, he's big shoes for UCF to fill back here in Orlando. Who are you seeing sort of step up in the receiver room to kind of maybe fill some of the some of the gap of losing Javon Baker? Well, um, I really like what I've seen from Whittemore. I think he's gotten a lot better. And and Xavier uh, Townsend, of course, is, is playing very well. I think Jared Baker has stepped up and is playing a lot better. 
Um, there are um, a couple other guys that, that have shown a lot of improvement as well. Uh, there are a couple of freshmen, true freshmen. I don't know how much they're going to play this year, but um, the Richardson, uh, Bedell Richardson and uh, Kylan Fox, uh, both are freshmen and they both have some skills. So uh, I don't know how much they'll play this year, but uh, I like what I've seen. I, there are a couple of other guys that haven't really shown much that I, I kind of expected might step up. Uh, the young man from Florida State, just hasn't shown yet that, that he's ready to go. Um, so we'll see. But, and, and, and of course, uh, um, we have the injury uh, with uh, number two. So, Kobe, um, yep. yeah. So uh, I think we know what he can do. So, and he's going to miss all of spring, but he'll be back in the fall. So I think, I think we're good in the, in the wide receiver room. I really do. Coach, this is the first time in, I think, 20 years that UCF doesn't have a Kluby Ali or a holler on the team, um, which is probably some sort of a record. But obviously, the, the, uh, you know, losing Alec Holler is a, is a big void from a leadership standpoint. Losing John Rice Plumley, a big void from a leadership standpoint. On offense, who have you seen kind of stepping up and, and being a leader, kind of leading the team and really kind of taking over maybe that captaincy role that you saw JRP or, or Alec Holler take in previous years? Well, I think Marcellus Marshall has done a, a lot of that. I think he's doing a really good job of that. I think in a quiet way, RJ does that too. Um, I haven't seen enough of KJ yet in, in that role, and but by his position, he probably will be too. Um, but I, I, I think, I think uh, Marcellus and, and uh, RJ have done a, a lot of good things. Coach, you mentioned uh, Kylan Fox, tight end. Um, are we going to see a little more uh, tight end uh, play? Well, actually, you know, Kyle, not just blocking, but are we going to see the tight end make some catches this season? What's uh, what's in store for us this coming season with the tight ends? Actually, Kylan is playing wide receiver. So uh, he's just a big wide receiver. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of tight end with Pittman. I think he's he's a really good blocker and he can split out and be fast enough and good enough as a receiver. And I think you'll see him a lot. Um there are a couple other guys that may step up yet at the tight end spot. So that when we go to tight ends, uh, we may have a couple other guys emerge uh, like Holler had done in the past. So uh, I think, I think though, you'll see a lot of Pittman and a lot of balls go to Pittman. You think we're going to use him as a, as a throwing option yeah. more so than a blocking option? I think he'll do both. And there is a young man that, uh, that came from Michigan state who, um, has a chance. He's, he's a good looking kid. I don't know. I haven't seen enough of him yet to know what's going to happen there, but uh, he's getting some reps and, and uh, if he lives up to the way he looks, he'll, he'll help us. <laughs> Coach, obviously a scrimmage on Saturday for UCF, the first scrimmage of, of this uh, spring you know, season. What, what are you trying to get as a coach out of this first scrimmage? What, what are the goals, expectations? You know, what are you trying to see uh, on scrimmage one of your coach? Well, the first thing you want to see is is how do the players, the individual players, react to true game like situations um, without, you know, being set up in a practice situation. So, uh, I think that's number one. I think number two is how well does each unit perform together? Because um, you get pieces of that during practice when you go good on good. Uh, you know, like today, the the uh, red zone offense versus defense, you get a little bit of that, but this will give you uh, a, a lot more um, true sense of what what to expect from each unit. And I think that's big. Um, and it's just, it's it's a different atmosphere. You know, it's not practice now. It's, it's as close as you get to a game uh, situation. So I think it's a different atmosphere that some players react well to and other players don't. So you find, out, you find out a lot there. Well, tell us a little bit more about uh, our new defensive coordinator, Ted Roof. What, what kind of coach is he? Is he, a, is he a tactician? Is he a yeller? Is he a screamer? Tell us a little bit more about what you've observed from Coach Roof. He's an experienced, solid, really good football coach. I've known him for a long, long time. He's been a friend. He is a, he's an aggressive coach. He's a tough, hard-nosed, old-school kind of coach. Uh, he's not a yeller or a screamer so much. But he's not going to shy away from doing that if that's necessary. 
but I, I think he's a great addition to our staff. I think his personality is aggressive and tough, and I think our defense will reflect that. Coach, we mentioned the the scrimmage. Uh, UCF has announced uh, the spring game here is going to be in the next couple of weeks. It's coming up pretty pretty soon. If you're Coach Melzon, what is the one thing that you, is at the top of your list between now and that spring game that you're focusing on? I think it's quarterback play. I think I want to I want to make sure that um, it's it's a fine line between putting too much in and not enough to really challenge a quarterback too. So I think it's quarterback play. I think on offense, at least defensively, I think it's got to be how well do we stop the run? So those two things I think is what he's looking for. And um, I think he's going to be, be pleasantly uh, not surprised, but he's going to be satisfied. I think. Is I also there... think it's, it's, it's fun to watch the kicking battle continue. Mm. Yeah, that's a good good topic too. What what have you seen from the kicking team or the uh, the guys that are out there kicking? Is uh, is Boomer looking any better? He seemed to have a tough you know tough end to the season last year. Uh, he what's he been looking like? Well, he and Grant have been alternating every kick, except on f- the Friday before spring break when Grant had a I think he had a wisdom tooth out or a root canal or something like that. But anyway, they've been alternating every kick today, and I'm only saying today because because it's all I remember. But today, <laughs> today Boomer made all of them and, and Grant missed one. So uh, today Boomer got a little leg up maybe. Coach, I, I, I want your, just your general thoughts. Obviously, there's a bunch of changes going on in the NFL. What, what do you make of this new kickoff rule? I don't know if you've heard about the kickoff rule where right. now they're lining up across from each other and the returner has to stay back. What do, you, what do you make of, as somebody who's old school football but also understands player safety, what do you make of some of these new fangled uh, rules that are coming out there? I think it's an interesting play now. Uh, it's, I, I think we, we saw it in the spring league in the XFL or USFL or whatever it was. They did that. Uh, and I think it's it's interesting. I'm I'm not sure I like it yet because it takes away um, some big plays in a way. It also takes away the onside kick, the surprise mm-hmm. onside kick. So I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure that it's a it's going to save that much injury wise. I don't know. I haven't. I don't know the stats on all of that. So, uh, but if it helps keep players healthy, I think it's a good thing. But uh, I, I love the kickoff return. I think that's an exciting play. And uh, and when a kickoff return team in the old style uh, executes a kickoff return, it's a huge, huge plus. And uh, and it, it and it's a big it's a big thing for the returner too because a lot of guys that is their what they do best, you know. So I, I'm not, I'm reserving judgment right now. I I'm, I'm familiar with. The, with what they're going to do, I'm, I'm not sure yet which way I'm going to fall on that. Uh, even if it does save a few injuries, I'm not, I don't know how much the difference will be. Uh, I'm not real sure about this uh, tackling rule mm-hmm. that they have. Uh, I don't know how you can enforce that. I, 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 it remains to be seen how they can enforce it and how they will. But um, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still up in the air about both of those. It depends on the team who the refs are. <laughs> the, well, the referees, the referees have a lot to say about the game anyway, and yeah. I always hate to give them any more input. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's fair. Coach, are you one that'll watch these spring leagues? I mean, you know, now it's the UFL. It used to be the XFL, USFL. I know you're a football lifer. Will you watch these spring leagues? Will you will you consume these products? Oh yes, yes. I have a couple of friends coaching on those teams too, so. That's okay. another reason to do it. So you got you got a favorite uh, team? Do you got someone we should look out for? Well, uh, you know, Skip Holtz and I coached together at South Carolina, and he's he's had two great seasons with the yeah. Birmingham team. So I'm I'm a Birmingham fan. Okay, some oh, former UCF. Uh, what what do you got on your head there? That's the Orlando Apollos. Oh yeah, that okay yeah that was great too. I had a couple friends on that staff too. 
Brian has seen every Apollo game ever played, Coach. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you out of here in this one last question. Our friend Clay has a uh, question in the chat here. He says he thinks you could cook a mean steak. Uh, <laughs> is Clay correct, Coach? Do you cook a mean steak? If so, how is Coach Lonsbury making a steak? I, I do cook a mean steak. Uh, and I eat yeah. a mean steak, and I like it just north of rare. What are you cooking, Coach? Are we talking a ribeye, filet? Well, yeah, ribeye, yeah. <laughs> both, I'll be sirloin, above. whatever, whatever I can afford to get. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a big. I grew up in Iowa on a on a cattle and hog farm, so we had our own steaks that we butchered ourselves. So I, I'm a connoisseur of steaks. Are you doing it on the grill, or are you doing it in the uh, on the oven, grill. or uh, on the on definitely the grill? You're gonna grill. You got any seasoning tips, Coach? Any uh, any special spices, seasonings that we can steal from you? Don't overdo it. Don't okay. don't overdo it. I think uh, simpler is best a lot of times. Well, he knows football. He knows steaks. I don't know. He probably knows more else. Um, unfortunately, we're, we're almost out of time, so I don't want to ask him too much. But, Coach, uh, enjoy the scrimmage Saturday. I'm sure you'll be out there, and hopefully we'll catch up with you next week. And you can give us the blow-by-blow. Blow. But, as always, we appreciate you hopping in with the Suns UCF. Thank you very much. I enjoy being on here. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Makes me kind of hungry, Brian. Now, what, what kind of steak? Yeah. What, are you a medium well guy? What kind of steak are you? Yeah, I'm going to go anywhere medium, medium rare uh, if, I'm, if, if it's a good steak. Okay. Well, this is around the kingdom time. This is where Trace would get mad at me if I don't play this. ¿Qué está pasando, Night Nation? What's happening, Night Nation? It's proud UCF alum, your favorite Spanish radio broadcaster, Leo Rodriguez. Let's go around the kingdom. When Leo says go around the kingdom, Brian, we go around the kingdom. We'll start with baseball, which I think is playing now. I don't know the score because I have not been watching. So if anyone in the chat knows, uh, let me know. But uh, they beat Jacksonville on Tuesday. They were one out away from a no-hitter, Brian. Texas Tech Thursday, Friday, Saturday. A bit of a different schedule because of uh, the Easter holiday on Sunday there. So uh, I know UCF baseball is playing now. By the way, check out sonsucf.com. Our friend Michael does the best job I've seen anyone do covering UCF baseball. In-depth analysis of the games that are played and the games that are coming up as well. So if you're a baseball person, sonsucf.com. Make sure you follow Michael. That's emptiness for he will keep you up to date on all things baseball. Brian, softball, bit of a rough weekend. Texas came to town and they took it to us. A sweep at the hands of Texas. Now 14 and 14 on the year, two and seven in the Big 12. Eric Lopez says, not to worry just yet. It's a tough conference. There's some winnable games here, including maybe this weekend at Texas Tech. But certainly there are some concerns on the softball side, Brian. Hopefully they can get that thing turned around quickly. You know, I was out uh, and uh, Mike and I went up to... Uh, to Orlando a couple weeks ago and we were Heard all about it. Yeah. Catch Elo. Yeah. At the Plex out there. We didn't get to see UCF softball play. We had to make it into the arena to watch the basketball game. They got, uh, they got delayed because of the tournament that was going on there, but uh, softball, so much fun, so much fun. Um, they've had, you know, they've had their ups and downs this season, but uh, coach Bob Malone will get them, get them turned around here and uh, on the right course here. What are we tied? Tied at one. Tied at one in the fourth yeah. inning, thanks to uh, our good friend, Matt Dolan. Hey, speaking of Eric Lopez, he makes uh, softball fun, Brian. He also makes a run the kingdom fun, where him and Trace Gucko yell at each other every week, including this week, where they <laughs> yell at each other about, I think this was Johnny Dawkins. Uh, I think it's the right move, and it's time, Trace. You're a modest person, so I know you will not take part in this, but I am not as, I'm more petty than you are. You and I <laughs> were 100% correct on this. We nailed this. And I think the people out there that were going after Trace, forget me, I understand people have my are critics of me. They can mock my art columns all you want. But Trace is a man that you knew, a lot of you, you know who you are, owe an apology because he got this right 100%. You didn't. So I expect the next time you see Trace on Around the Kingdom and on Suns Live <laughs> that a lot of you apologize publicly and say, Trace, you were right. That's what I want. That's my declaration. <laughs> <laughs> Was, was Elo wearing Tennessee orange in that? I, don't, I think it was Auburn orange because he was at a softball game. I'm not really sure. Did we owe Trace an apology? 
feel like he owes me uh, an apology. He's not even here tonight. Like I, I feel like he, he owes yeah, you he, an apology not here. for being there here. There is no apologies to be given out if he's not here to accept them. That is a that is a great question. I need to get back with Elo on that one. But <laughs> let's let's not fool ourselves. The real reason you all turned in is the return of Clay's corner, uh, who has been chronicling games for his all season long. He took a couple of weeks sabbatical to enjoy some spring break and apparently not eat any food, according to the chat I just saw. But luckily, he knows still how to work uh, his video recording machines. And here is his recap of UCF Texas Tech. UCF versus Texas Tech. So the highlights I was given are like really bad. So please go ahead and bear with me. We start the game out with a nice catch from Kobe Hudson. And then Javon tries to toe tap in the end zone, but it's called back. So, but no worries though, because RJ Harvey gets in the end zone to put us up by seven. Colton Boomer kicks the extra point, which is going to be rare this game. Knights get the ball back and Colton Boomer on a fake field goal attempt, takes it down the field and almost goes for a touchdown. So does anyone know if he can throw? Can Col Colton can throw. Okay, Ted, get on that right now. New Wildcat formation. All right, all right. Another R.J. Harvey touchdown later, and Texas Tech finally goes on the board. Texas Tech gets the ball back and ends up driving down the field and gets a nice little touchdown here. The Knights then try to respond, but in a weird move, we end up going for it, and the clock runs out instead of going for a field goal. After a lackluster third quarter, uh, I think we get a field goal on the board, and they score another touchdown. So, welcome to these awful highlights. Texas Tech settles for a field goal to go up to 24. Knights get the ball back, and Javon blesses us with his amazing catch and goes down the field to score six. Now all Colton Boomer has to do is just make the extra point. And it's no good! Wow. I forget some of this nonsense. Holy crap, that sucks. Watching that Texas Tech game was tough. Uh, uniforms on point, by the way, that week. I'm sure you uh, would but, say that, yeah. But nobody was more relieved that UCF ended up losing that game in Trace after he talked about uh, Texas Tech all off season long. And up until that point, he had just said Texas Tech was the game he was worried about. So yeah, I, guess he was I can't, right. I can't confirm right he's not at Texas Tech right now, actually. I can't confirm that's not where he's at. But uh, the fighting Trace Trelcos. Who cares about Trace Trelco when we have this fun segment, Brian? So it's a mailbag. So what? So what? Do you know whose mailbag that is? It's that time again. Time to open the Brian W. Peterson Sons of UCF mailbag. Oh, hell yeah. It's really the hell yeah, I think that makes that segment. Uh, UCF Mike was going to join us, Brian. Uh, turns out Mike will not be joining us. In a, what a uh, surprise. What, what, what I would call a surprise move. But I've got questions for you. This comes from McGuckin underscore M6. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, do you have any concerns knowing that transfers that just signed are still able to hop in the portal after this portal window, Brian. We just saw that happen at Iowa with uh, Caden Proctor. You concerned about guys we just got already leaving UCF? I mean, it's always possible, right? That That's what the, the transfer portal is going to be. Uh, the portal giveth and the portal taketh away, you know. Um, I think that there's always going to be that threat there with the portal, so you can't let it you know, uh, control you, so to speak. Uh, you just got to go with what you got, and if someone enters the portal, so be it. Uh, this question from Golden uh, Knight underscore two with the ever changing landscape, Brian, is college football getting or college sports in general, I guess, getting better or worse? Is this is it a downgrade as a fan from where you were 10 years ago? I don't know that it's a downgrade for me personally, just because, I mean, I grew up watching UCF in the Mac and in Conference USA. And now here we are in the Big 12. So. Uh, from my own personal perspective, it's been on the upswing just because I'm a UCF fan and this is this is the time to be a UCF fan. Um, I think that college sports is constantly evolving. Um, some of the rules probably need to be a little less strict in certain areas. And we also need to uh, uh, we need to watch out for the big uh, the Big Ten and the SEC and, you know, uh, them splitting away from the NCAA and that sort of thing. So it's a balance. Um, it kind of depends on who you're a fan of. Yeah, obviously, I think the the financial side has certainly made some changes to college athletics and some good, some bad, but maybe that'll work itself out one day. Scott, 88513, wants to know, Brian, how far can this UCF baseball team go? It depends on which baseball team we get. Uh, they're they're kind of up and down right now. What are they, four and five in the Big 12? Uh, is that what, I think that's what their, their record is. Um in conference oh, play yeah four uh, and five yeah four and five uh got to get that above 500 we got to start climbing the ranks um the, the big 12 knows how to play baseball though so uh can't really be disappointed uh in the first season 
Well, then Riley Carey 16 wants to know, do you see baseball making a regional? Probably not would be my guess. Um, not unless they can, you know, really start to improve here down the stretch, but uh, we'll see. Black and gold underscore ed softball is not doing well. Is it pitching, hitting, or a lack of shade at the plex, Brian? Uh, well, if you ask Elo, it's a hundred percent the lack I know. of shade. Please get um, that man some shade. Yes. Uh, and in and, and Elo's defense, I I have sat in the plex and it is hot uh, when it's uh, when that sun is baking. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem is with softball. Um, I can't imagine it's the hitting. Or the pitching, it's got to be a combination of the two. Maybe they're just not, uh, you know, hitting at the right time when the hitting is, isn't is good. The pitching is better. And then when the pitching is better, the hitting isn't good. So they need to find a way to get in tune with one another, I think, is probably the answer to that question. That's some sharp analysis. This is a story in two parts. First, at UCF Knights win. Is UCF baseball the only team in the Big 12 that plays on a real uh, grass field? Answer, Michael, emptiness for uh, Baylor, UCF, Oklahoma State, TCU all have natural grass fields. Everyone else is some form of turf. So there's a question and an answer. I'm going to enjoy that. At M. John and J. Johnson. Why do these ACC fans believe that FSU and Clemson are automatically going to be in the Big Ten or SEC? What um, what do you think about essentially that those schools kind of joining and what other schools do you think actually add value, Brian, if you could add them to the Big 12? I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen with the ACC yet. Um, obviously, Florida State and now Clemson are really trying to do their absolute best to get out of the grant of rights uh, deal that the has that the ACC has them locked in with. Um, the latest I heard was that potentially the Big 12 could add Miami if the ACC were somehow to fall apart. And, and while I think that is possible, I don't think that that's going to happen in the near future. Uh, certainly not this season. Uh, it would be great for UCF to add a program like Miami to the Big 12. We'd have a regional rival, uh, somebody that would be able to uh, kind of alleviate our travel costs a little bit. Um but I don't think that there's anyone really from the ACC that would be a bad ad, whether it's for football or basketball. They've got a lot of great historical basketball programs. The last I heard was that um, the Big 12 was trying to go after Duke. I heard just that recently. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, uh, I'm really curious to see what happens here. I mean, that goes back to the original question of is, is college sports getting better or worse? Oh, good. Get Duke so we can lose some more basketball games. I'm going to skip a few here. At Dolly underscore drama with such a low buyout, exceptional character, and a highly revered college <laughs> basketball guy in a lot of elite circles. Why is Johnny Dawkins never on other programs hot boards when they have coaching openings, Brian? You know, Dolly makes a really good point here. Um, we, we heard the rumors that perhaps uh, Vanderbilt was going to be interested in hiring him away or, or he was going to move to Vanderbilt in some form or fashion. Um, I think that overall the UCF faithful believe that uh, Johnny Dawkins did a good job this season, right? And that kind of makes you wonder, I don't know basketball, right? Like Johnny Dawkins does. I don't know basketball sure? like some of these uh, some of these ADs do, but it's a good question. I mean, yeah. he hasn't been highly sought after by other programs that are willing to throw some money at him. Um, I don't know if that says anything to his coaching record. I mean, we know that his basketball acumen is is off the charts. Um, but and it's a good question posed by Dolly. At Hugh C. Hef, uh, the Kingdom NIL received two six-figure donations for men's basketball. Brian, how would you allocate those two six-figure donations? Gold jerseys. Perfect. Phil Talk Sports wants to know, what was John Rice Plumley's biggest win as a UCF QB? His top three are Boise State in 24, Oklahoma State in 24, and at number 17, Tulane in 2023, Brian. JRP's biggest win as a UCF Knight is what? It's definitely one of those three games. Uh, I mean, they're probably a toss-up as to which one. I would probably go with Tulane just because they were top 25 ranked at the time. It was on the road. Um, and I absolutely will never forget that game because of the wild Bowser fake pass to JRP down the sideline. Um, so I would have to go with, with 17 Tulane. Somewhere J JP Gilbert just had a, a, a shutter there. And the final one, and this person did not know you'd be on the show, Brian. This comes from at JC Morning. Should UCF upgrade their unis to bring back pewter and maybe, just maybe, gold for Brian W. Peterson? 
Absolutely. If I wasn't going to wear a gold jersey, it would be a pewter jersey. So give me all the pewter jerseys back. I love the pewter. Uh, and yeah, bit, give yeah. me some gold. Give me the give me the gold back too. I'm a big Peter fan. I don't know about the about the gold as much, but I'm definitely a big Peter fan. All right, Brian, we got a new thing around here. It's called What's in the Box. What's in the box? At, at Charlie Hustle, uh, promo code TEN1215 gets you 15% off your non-sale item, Brian. Here is this week's What's in the Box question. All right, I broke it. Um, all right, what is one lie we are constantly all told and we all accept it? even though everybody knows it's really a lie. JRP's a good quarterback. Wow. Jeez, Brian. <laughs> I mean, it's a family program. I mean, the guy just ran a 4-4-9 for crying he out did. loud. He I mean, that's where you are? My goodness. <laughs> uh, Dolly's pointing out taxes. Taxes are a big one. Taxes aren't actually. <laughs> it's a really, it's a really, really good one. No, the, the, the biggest lie that we're told is that gold jerseys should not be brought back. And we all know that that's absolutely not the case. I think the entire airline industry is a lie. I don't believe a single solitary thing that happens from the moment I get to the airport to the moment I get uh, home from the airport. I don't believe anything about it. I don't think I need my seatbelt fastened. I think they can make up time whenever they want to make up time. I, I, I just, I don't believe a single thing about the airline experience. Everything if, they're telling you there, Brian, is a fat lie. If you are on a Boeing airliner, you definitely need well, to be wearing your seatbelt, okay? Okay, that's a that's a fair point. <laughs> that, is, that is a fair point. I, I believe that's a, that's absolutely a lie. Um, appointment times at doctor's office. I mean that that's definitely a lie. I mean yeah, they're, they're not they're not taking you at that point. Hundred um, percent. This is a good one by Matt Dolan. Gus Malzahn was not calling plays. Mm -hmm. That's a, that is a great lie that we are constantly told and we believe, even though we all uh, know a it's lie that, lie. that JRP is going to or not JRP JP Gilbert is going to make it to uh, a UCF sporting event this season. Wow. I, I have faith in our guy. I have no, faith he, in our guy. He, he's not now it, it sure as heck won't be women's, it won't be women's basketball game. I can promise you that. He, but he, may make it up, he may make it to a football game. He may. He had a chance. Mike told you this on the pod. He had a chance yeah. to come with us on the bright line and he had a bright line credit and he had approval from the wife and he still didn't come. I, I have no faith. Uh, do you, are you somebody who do you lie constantly? Like when you see someone that you're not going to call, you're like, Hey man, I'll call you later. Like, are you one of those guys too? Do you find yourself? Are you guilty of committing a lot of these lies that you know are lies and the other person knows a lie as well? I don't know if they know it's a lie, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of, uh, of so in your mind it. when you're like, yeah, man, I'm gonna give you a call later. You're never yeah. calling that person, right? Yeah. Just like Mike was going to come on for the, uh, for the mailbag. Yeah. No, that's fair. No, Patrick, you're probably right. The flight crew probably is hungover. And, uh, but again, everything at the airport, don't believe a thing, friends. Everything you believe uh, at the airport is, is a lie. But what hasn't been a lie is the fact that this has been an awesome show, Brian. Appreciate you hopping in. I know Trace is otherwise engaged tonight. So thanks for always filling in. I know you got a ton going on with the uh, tax season in your life. Always good to steal a, an hour away with you and talk a little UCF sports. Again, don't forget sonsucf.com for all your, uh, your UCF needs and make sure you find our YouTube channel where you can find all these videos and much, much more. Everybody, have a fantastic Easter weekend. Uh, have some fun. Be safe. Spend some time with your family. And we will refire this bad boy up sometime next week with a whole bunch of shows. But until then, we will talk to you all later. Everybody, go Knights. Charge on. Yo, 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 this is Robert Griffin III. I want to say thank you for watching Sons of UCF. Robert Griffin, rest your peace. Oh, man.